I begin, I've got one or two announcements I'd like to make. Mandatory attendance certificates uh, will be distributed to, to all the attendees at the end of the conference. They cost 100 rand each. Uh, please would you have your cash available <laughs> as you leave through the door. And as you all know, there's a furious cold front coming in today. So all attendees are required to donate at least one item of clothing to the PE Winter Woolies Fund. Please decide which item of clothing you're going to donate as you leave through the, through the hall. Now that was the wrong reaction. You were supposed to be angry. <laughs> you were supposed to absolutely refuse to, to put up with this. But of course I'm kidding. You weren't annoyed, unfortunately. <laughs> But were any of you planning to refuse? You were? Or were any of you worrying if you had 100 rand in cash on you? Okay, <laughs> doke. Now, why was it annoying? Why were you angry? It's really pretty simple. It's because you were being forced to do something against your will. Some presumptuous person showed up at the front of the hall and said, you will do things, you will pay money, you will obey me. And it's rude. Let's face it, it's just plain rude. But the biggest problem was nobody asked for your consent. You came in here with one set of impressions as to how the day would go, and suddenly somebody was doing something to you without your consent. And yet I'm curious as to how many of you, understanding that consent is critical, that it's simply good manners, a buy or leave, or if I may, is how we grease the wheels of our society, not do it my way or die, most of the time. But it should always be your right to say no. Peaceful human interactions require the consent of all the parties to that. And yet often government rules, well, rather, government ought to rule only with the consent of the government. But that's not always true. All these things we accept without consent. I wonder how many of you in your wallets have two or three or four pieces of paper that are only there because you have to. You don't want those pieces of paper, you have to pay for them, and you don't argue. You, you simply say, I must have a license fee. I must have a license for my car, for my driver, as, for me as a driver, for my TV set. I'll pay taxes, ID books. Ficker, all of these things you do without consent, but nevertheless you do them because the alternative is just too much trouble, too much hassle, too, too many angry people that you have to go through in order not to obey smoking laws, health laws, travel restrictions, property laws, labor laws. Now it's unquestionably true that people have differences. People in this room, if there's 100 people in the room or 50 people in the room, there are 50 or 60 different points of view. So we have different worldviews. Some of you think that the community takes precedence over the individual. I happen to think that the individual takes precedence. We have different economic systems. Capitalism, socialism, communism. All of them have their merits and their, their disadvantages. We have lots of political systems. We have democracies, monarchies, theocracies, dictatorships, and all of these are out there in the world as we speak. Which one do you choose? Which one do you have the misfortune to live under? Many religious views, many environmental views. It's always amazing to me that these days you can't even start a conversation about the weather without a starting a fight. Are you, are you a green or are you not? Do you believe in global warming or don't you? So, <laughs> you used to be able to talk about what you ate without starting a fight, but nowadays with banting versus the rest, even, even, even that is a major source of disagreement in society. So we have many, many differences. But nearly everyone agrees that, well, that you are the best judge of what's good for yourself. And all of those who think that I should be making decisions for them, please put up your hands now. 
<laughs> right, your wallet, please. <laughs> and we generally all agree that your consent is needed for the things that affect you. And yet we don't live by that most of the time. We all agree that using force without consent is bad. We understand that in a bar talking to a pretty girl. But we don't seem to understand it in much of the rest of our life that before you do something to me, ask me for my consent. And before I do something to you, I will ask for yours. And that if we don't, then war is inevitable. Without consent, you're a victim. Murderers and rapists do not ask for your consent. Thieves and robbers, your enemies do not ask for your consent. And unfortunately, a lot of the time, your government does not ask you for your consent. They, more than anybody else, tend to be in the business of telling you what to do rather than asking you whether you should do it. Your consent is the foundation of your freedom. When you go into pick and pay, they don't tell you which products you will buy today. They might try to persuade you with a ton of advertising, but they never actually are able to say, you will buy cornflakes today. And they can't tell you what price you will pay. They can put a price on the product, but you can refuse to buy that product at that price. Go down the road to checkers and, and buy it cheaper. No, I'm not being paid. Um, so this system works well. It works well in all of our buying and selling. In, in any commercial transaction, it only works if you have the consent of both parties. So it's not a surprising concept. We all understand that healthy relationships are based on mutual consent. And I think we've had a couple of people here today talk about that and talk about the requirement if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody to respect their positions, their wills, and have and expect them to respect yours. Sport is an interesting environment. Many of you who are going to the rugby will understand there's not a lot of consent as you go into a loose mall. Okay, you're going to hit it as hard as you can and you're going to injure other people if you can, if you're big enough. But all the sportsmen have been asked to consent to the rules of that game in advance. And they only play if they have consented. Not like some of the games that you see on TV where you're obliged to play and die within the games. In our sport, it requires players to consent to a set of rules. And having once cons consented to that set of rules, then what follows? Violence, force, deception, intrigue. All of those are acceptable, so long as you've consented up front. And in much the same way, I believe that government should depend on the consent of the governed. It appears in various constitutions. It's honored more in the breach than in the reality. Unfortunately, the greatest violator of our freedom is often the institution charged with protecting it. So what is the consent axiom? It's a constitution based on consent, much like the American Constitution, much like the South African Constitution, only a lot shorter. Okay, you don't require a thousand lawyery words to communicate a fundamental concept. It's a uniquely South African document for what it's worth. It was invented here in South Africa, a bit like the Freedom Charter. It's uh, an unashamedly libertarian document and for any of you who don't know what a libertarian is, I'll see you at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting, it's the product of 30 years of discussion. Um, we've been developing and refining this particular statement of the consent axiom. Over 30 years, only a couple of us, it's not a huge movement. But anyway, we, we like to think that we're making progress. As you would expect with a consent axiom, it starts with an agreement. And the agreement is that you are and I am a free individual and the sole owner of my body. That has huge implications. I am the sole decider of what goes in my mouth. 
And whether it happens to be food or heroin or marijuana or fatty foods, okay, I'm the sole des decider of that because I'm the sole owner of my body. I'm the s I can make a decision to terminate my life if I choose because I'm the sole owner of my body. So these are heavy, profound concepts, once again, mostly honored in the breach. Um, most governments do not believe that you have a right to commit suicide, for example. Almost all governments have a strong opinion on what you put in your mouth, um, no matter what the source. But the key point of the consent axiom is this line. I agree to take no harmful action against others without their consent, unless they have already harmed others without consent. So we're not pacifists. You kick me, I'm going to kick you back. Okay? You take down my family, I'm coming for your family. So we're not pacifists. But in a consenting society, we agree that this is how we would behave. Being a constitution, it comes with certain rights. And being a consent constitution, you have to consent to those rights. In other words, we don't, or in our, our future libertaria, our utopia, we wouldn't impose your, these rights upon you. You would agree to, to them and confer them upon others. As I've already discussed, the right to life, the right to resist actions against you, the right to own property, which is very profound. Almost everything that you do in life depends on you owning and sharing property. And the right to a fair trial by one's peers. So, our slogan for the consent axiom is no action without consent. Thank you.